Okay, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to cover electrochemistry and the activity of metals. And this is, again, quite a complex topic, so you have to make sure that you're paying very close attention. And I guarantee you that this will be on the exam, so you need to make sure that you're paying very close attention. Okay, so let's imagine you set up three experiments. In one, you're going to put a strip of copper into a solution of silver nitrate. In the second, you set a strip of zinc in a solution of copper 2 nitrate. And in the third, a strip of silver is placed in a solution of zinc nitrate. But only two of these three setups will result in reactions. When the metal ions are, uh, atoms are con combined with metal ions in solution, you may or may not end up with a reaction. Some combinations of metals and metal salts result in redox reactions and others don't. It all depends on which combination of metals are used. Consider the three solutions shown here. Each solution contains metal cations and a strip of element metal. If the metal atoms on the strip transfer electrons to the metal cations in solution, a reaction will occur. In the first beaker, the copper atoms transfer electrons to the silver ions. Copper atoms are oxidized, and the silver cations are reduced. As a result, the silver metal can be seen as coating on the copper strip. And you can see that here. In the second beaker, zinc atoms transfer electrons to the copper ions in solution. Zinc atoms are oxidized and copper is reduced. Copper metal will coat the zinc strip. In the third beaker, though, there is no reaction. Silver does not give up its electrons in the presence of zinc ions. Chemists would say that this is because silver is not as active as zinc. By combining different metals and metal ions, you can determine experimentally which metals are more active than other metals. The result is called an activity series. So far, experimentally, we've determined that zinc, copper, and silver can be placed in order of their activity. So let's try it with magnesium. When you combine magnesium with zinc nitrate, the magnesium will be oxidized to form magnesium 2 plus ions. So magnesium is more active than zinc. When we do zinc, it will, is more active than copper, and copper is still more active than silver. If you notice, all of the reactions in this section have been single exchange reactions where the more easily oxidized metal displaces the other metal as an ion. In this way, the more active metal forms cations while the less active metal is reduced to a solid. In other words, it precipitates out. A series of experiments can reveal where other metals belong on this list. The more active atoms at the top of the list will always displace the less active ones below. On this list, gold is at the bottom. Gold atoms are very difficult to oxidize. Gold does not tarnish. That's part of why we value it so highly. And gold cations are very easy to reduce. This is one reason why gold is rarely found in compounds combined with other atoms. A metal high in the activity series will react vigorously and quickly with compounds. It will readily give up electrons in reactions to form positive ions, and it is corroded easily. A metal low in the activity series does not react vigorously and quickly with chemicals. It does not readily give up electrons in reactions to form positive ions, and it is not corroded easily. So let's take a look at this one. When we take a look at lead, it gives up electrons to copper cations, but not to zinc. So you're going to write the net ionic equation for the reaction between lead and copper 2 plus ions. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Okay. So what we do is first we write the net ionic equation. So we've got lead 
and that's a solid, plus copper 2 ions in solution. That's going to give us lead 2 plus ions plus copper metal. So lead doesn't give up electrons to zinc, but that means that the reverse reaction will happen, and zinc would give up electrons to lead cations. And that's referring to this question here. Do you suspect zinc will transfer electrons to lead cations? Explain. So lead doesn't give up electrons to zinc because it's lower on the activity series. But that means that the reverse reaction will happen and zinc will give up electrons to lead cations. So if you put zinc in a lead solution, a lead aqueous solution, the lead will precipitate out. Zinc is more active than lead and so it displaces the lead in the ionic compound. The Baghdad battery is one of the most confusing ancient artifacts for scientists and archaeologists. In 1930, on a plot of ancient tombs outside of Baghdad, in a place called Kajut Rabula, some archaeologists doing ex excavations there discovered an artifact that supposedly represent a set of chemical batteries that is over 2,000 years old. The artifacts consist of terracotta pots approximately 5 inches tall with 1.5 inch mouths, containing copper cylinders made of rolled up copper sheets which house a single iron rod. At the top, the iron rod is isolated from the copper by, by tumen plugs or stoppers, and both rod and cylinder fit snugly inside the opening of the jar, which bulges outward toward the middle. The copper cylinder is not watertight, so if the jar was filled with a liquid, this would surround the iron rod as well. The artifact had been exposed to the weather and had suffered corrosion, although mild given the presence of an electrochemical couple and this has led some to believe that lemon juice, grape juice, or vinegar was used as an acidic electrolyte solution to generate an electric current from the difference between the two electrical, electrochemical potentials of the copper and iron electrodes. So the concept of storing energy chemically is a very old one, and today batteries are used extensively in our daily lives, and batteries contain controlled redox reactions. In electrochemical cells, or batteries, reduction-oxidation reactions convert the transfer of electrons into electrical energy. The first step to controlling a redox reaction is to separate the oxidation and reduction reactions. One possible way to do this is shown here, where you've got two strips of metal called electrodes placed into two beakers. Both beakers are filled with aqueous salt solutions called electrolytes and electrons flow through a wire connecting the two metal strips, and ions move across a salt bridge connecting the two electrolyte solutions. The electron flow from the electrode that gets oxidized, or the negative pole, to the electrode that gets reduced, the positive pole. So first of all, keep in mind, electrons move from the negative to the positive poles. The negative pole is the one that gets oxidized, and the positive pole is the one that gets reduced. The electrode that gets oxidized, the negative pole, over time becomes smaller as the reaction proceeds, while the electrode that gets reduced gets larger as the reaction proceeds. Meanwhile, the anions move through the salt bridge from the negative pole to the positive pole. You can use the activity series to help you predict what will happen to an electrochemical cell. Because zinc is higher on the chart than silver, zinc is more active metal, and you can expect it to be the one that gets oxidized. Because silver is not very active metal, you can expect it to be reduced. If you place zinc and silver in the same beaker, the reaction will occur with direct transfer of electrons from the zinc to the silver cations, and will just continue until one or both of the reactants is used up. When you separate the reactants, it allows you to control the reaction and to create an electrical current. Each half of an electrochemical cell is called a half cell. The reaction in the electrochemical cell can be stopped and started when you desire it, and it will proceed only when the circuit is closed and the two halves of the reaction are connected. The reaction that takes place in each half cell is called a half reaction. But not every combination of metal and metal salts results in the same output of energy, even when they're separated. 
Generally, the farther apart the two metals are on the activity series list, the more energy will be produced by a reaction between them. The concentration of the reactants, as well as the identities of the metals and metal ions used, can affect the amount of energy produced. So let's imagine you want to create an electrochemical cell using magnesium and tin. Which metal would be oxidized and which is reduced? Well, the magnesium is higher on the activity series than tin. Therefore, the magnesium is the one that gets oxidized and the tin is the one that gets reduced. In Part B, it asks what ion will form and what metal will be plated out as of solution as a solid. Well, the tin will be plated onto the tin strip because it's the one that gets reduced. The magnesium ions, or Mg2+, will form in the solution. When we write out the half reactions and the net ionic equation, we get this. So here's the first reaction, the oxidation reaction. Here's the reduction, and then here's our net ionic equation. Notice we didn't have to change anything because the electrons were the same. The energy that comes out of an electrochemical cell is expressed in volts. The voltage of a battery lets you know how much energy is stored in it or how much potential it has to produce energy. Chemists can predict the voltage of an electrochemical cell by examining the two half reactions involved. The voltage of half cells is measured under uniform conditions, which is one atmosphere of pressure, 25 degrees Celsius, and one molar concentration. These voltages are normally expressed as reduction half reactions and are listed in standard reduction potentials tables like this one. The overall voltage of an electrochemical cell can be calculated by finding the difference between potentials of the half reactions. This means subtracting the voltage of the oxidation process from the voltage of the reduction process. So let's look at what that looks like. We're going to determine the voltage of a silver zinc electrochemical cell. So the silver is an 8, 0.8 volts and the zinc is point, negative 0.76 volts. But please note that while both reactions are written as reductions, and by now you know that all redox reactions have to have an oxidation half reaction and a reduction half reaction, here's how you determine which one goes a re as a reduction and which one as an oxidation. The half reaction that is more negative will proceed as an oxidation. So when you take a look at the voltages, you see that the zinc half reaction proceeds as an oxidation and the silver half reaction will proceed as a reduction. So now you subtract the reduction potential of the oxidation half reaction from the reduction potential of the reduction half redu reaction. So 0.8 volts minus negative 0.76 volts gives you a positive 1.56 volts. So the cell has a voltage of 1.56. Electrochemical cells have been developed into batteries, which are basically containers of chemicals just waiting to be converted to electrical energy. The chemical reactions within a battery do, do not take place until the two reactions are connected to one another. When you flip the switch on a flashlight, you're connecting the halves of the battery inside. If you forget and leave the flashlight on, the chemical reaction will continue until the battery is dead. Some batteries are rechargeable, and this means that once the battery has gone dead, an electric current can be run through it in the opposite direction in order to push the reverse reaction to occur. This restores the original reactants, and the battery is good once again. Most household batteries produce between 1.5 and 9 volts. Batteries also often contain hazardous substances, so it is important to dispose of them properly so that they don't contaminate water supplies or soil. Recycling centers and city offices and others have often have a hazardous household materials day. Make sure that on those days that you bring in your batteries for recycling, don't just toss them in the garbage. Okay, so there's a lot of practice materials. I highly recommend that you do a lot of these practices because it's going to take you a while to get a lot of this. Make sure that you review redox if you need to and make sure that you've tried the different electrochemical cells. You will be drawing some uh, in order to determine which one's going to plate and which one isn't. 
All right. If you have any questions, by all means, see me during office hours. And if not, have a great day.